In this video I will show you how to run a power analysis, that is, how to calculate the sample size for process model 2 with GPower, the free power calculation tool. You'll find a link to GPower in the description of this video. Process model 2 is a model with two moderators that both moderate the effect from the independent variable to the dependent variable. We are talking about a power calculation for this model. We have to decide what exactly it is we want to analyze what exactly our hypothesis is about, because there are basically two possibilities. The first is to look at the effect of one of those two moderators in the context of a model where both moderate. So we could be interested in whether moderator 1 moderates in this model and whether moderator 2 moderates in this model. So in that case we are testing a single regression weight, that is, the relevant interaction. Let's look at a typical output of process model 2. Here we have the independent variable, the first moderator, the first interaction between the independent variable and the first moderator, the second moderator, and the interaction between independent variable and second moderator. If this p-value is interesting for us, that is, whether in the context of this model the interaction 1 is significant, then we are testing a single regression weight. and We want to know whether this regression weight is significantly different from 0. The same for interaction 2. Please keep in mind, because we need that number later, we have five predictors in this model. Here's the relevant test for that within GPower, linear multiple regression, fixed model, single regression coefficient. There would be a second option to do this, but I prefer this one. Here we can change from a one-tailed test to a two-tailed test. Whether you use one-tailed or two-tailed depends on the way you will be testing later on. Will you be running a one-tail test or a two-tail test? And I think the two-tail test is more popular even for a directional hypothesis. Then the effect size. The value here would be a medium-sized effect. A small effect would be 0.02 and a large effect would be 0.35. Actually, it's quite unlikely that you will get a medium-sized effect in a moderation analysis because moderation analyses have chronically small effect sizes. So I think it makes more sense to use a small effect here. Then the alpha error that stays at 0.05. Power, that's your choice, I prefer 0.80. That implies that if there is an effect of that effect size, I have an 80% chance of getting a significant result. And then the number of predictors in the model. And we saw that earlier in this case with process model 2, there are five predictors that number can increase if you include covariates. So for each covariate, you have to increase this number by one. So in a process model 2 with three covariates, here you would have to put in eight as a number of predictors. And then calculate, and the sample size we need would be 395. Now to the second possible test for your hypothesis. Maybe you're interested whether moderator 1 and moderator 2 taken together significantly moderate this relationship. What does this mean? The first interaction explains variance in the dependent variable, the second interaction explains variance in the dependent variable, and both together explain variance in the dependent variable. And you can test with this test down here, that's part of the output of process model 2, whether both moderators taken together significantly explain additional variance in the dependent variable. If you want to calculate the necessary sample size for a question like this, we need a different power calculation. This is an F-test, linear multiple regression, fixed model, R-squared increase. Then you put in the sample size. Again, I use a small effect. You maybe change the power. And in this case, the rest actually is the correct value. We have two tested predictors because we want to look at the effect of two interactions we include in the model. And the total number of predictors again is five. Should you have covariates, the number of tested predictors stays the same but the total number of predictors increases by one for each covariate you include. And here we would need 485 as a sample size to achieve a power of 0 0.80. That's it for power calculation for process model 2. I hope this has been helpful for you. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video.